Well, people need someone to mix their drinks, uh, and I'm good for that. Don't do it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Gonna yeah. Be a puddle. When I was doing the Reba show, uh, kids would say, hey, Mama, did you know that Reba McIntyre sings? <laughs> Didn't know that. This week on Headline Country, Reba takes us to the set of her West Coast home in Malibu Country. Stars from all corners of music gather to welcome Garth Brooks, Connie Smith, and keyboard icon Pig Robbins into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Songwriters celebrate a long parade of accolades. And in honor of this week's election, the CMA red carpet gets a little political, sort of. Hey, this is Loriana. We're Love and Theft! And the headline, headline country starts right now! <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Stormy Warren. Welcome to Headline Country. Well, you've probably heard or seen for yourself that Reba is back on TV, thanks to her new ABC sitcom, Malibu Country. Though there are a few similarities to her previous show, Reba, Malibu Country is a completely different story. I met up with a multi-talented star on the show's Los Angeles set, where not only did I get a tour of her fictional beach house, I also sealed a deal with a promise much stronger than a handshake, or even a contract. He's a moron. <laughs> and I'm leaving his lying, cheating butt. If you're still named Reba on this show, people are gonna automatically try to draw the comparisons between these two sitcoms that you've been a part of. Not a lot of similarities. Some, but not a lot. Well, there are, you know, I do have a, a quirky neighbor mm. who's always getting under my skin. I am Kim. I'm your next door neighbor. I noticed you were home because I can see right in. Anyway, I just wanted to come by and say hi. But there are, there are a lot of differences. You know, I am now a career woman trying to uh, increase my popularity in the music business. Now we want a hook, okay? Are you young? Uh-uh. <laughs> are you sexy? Uh-uh. <laughs> How much does this, uh, the relationships and everything actually mirror portions of your life? Hmm. Your real life? A lot. A lot. A lot. Because in 2001, Shelby was uh, 11 years old, and we came out here to do the Reba show. And in our real life, Shelby's like, I don't want to live here. <laughs> he I want to go home. Yeah. And finally, he just had to accept he's going to be here for a while. Yeah, and he, he's okay with round two? Yeah. <laughs> he re it really did. It toughened him up a little bit, and he's, uh, I think he's a better person for it. I, for one, am thrilled about this. See, I'm gonna have my girlfriend in Nashville for when I go back, and then I'm gonna get a hot new one in California. What do you get out of this environment, this aspect of the entertainment business? What is your personal joy about doing this part? I love the creativity. I love keeping me sharp. Uh, it's just keeping my brain working. Yeah. And, you know, when I did Broadway, it was the same play every night for six months, eight shows a week. And this one, we get a new script every Friday morning. Do the breaks allow you to keep going on dates and stuff? Uh -huh. for, so you're going to keep the, uh, the concert tours going and everything while you're while you're here? Yeah. Lily Tomlin, uh, she also has dates. Matter yeah, of fact, she just did it last weekend. And then I have concerts that I'm, I'll be going out to uh, perform. So, yeah, our careers in television and on stage will continue. Hi, I'm Reba, and that's my mama, Lily May. Hi, Hey. If he's wearing your panties, what do you wear? Okay, so here we are on the CBS Radford lot. Another year, another sitcom set another for Reba. Another different sitcom, <laughs> another different location. But this is the kitchen where we do all of our cussing and discussing. This is a beautiful house. Thank you. Thank <laughs> well you very done. much. Well, it's a party pad. This it's is what my ex-husband, Bobby Gallagher, had. Now, Reba, your character, you did not know that he had this house. No, I did not know he had this house. <laughs> and when we got our divorce, I wanted to get the kids out of Nashville. Yeah. So I found out about this. I think just a little bit of a jab, <laughs> too, I wanted it. So I got it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and up here is where I write all my music. Because you're back show. at it. You're getting back into the swing of things. I as a am musician. getting back in the swing of things. I'm restarting my career. Bedrooms. All our bedrooms. And that's my little office in here. And the live audience, how exciting is it on tape day? Oh, it's always places. exciting when we have a uh, live audience. It's just like being on concert. Yeah. So I like to I like to be performing in front of a live audience, and they just give us more energy. Sure. It's nothing like it. Yeah. <laughs> True. 
Awesome. And mm. here's the beach. Here's the now, beach. when that is lit up at night, it oh looks my real. gosh, it looks so real and it's beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing what they can do with lighting. That's a view to kill for. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for showing us around your, your beautiful new home. You're welcome. The big question is, I don't know if you recall, but the last time we visited a set with on, on the old Reba set, uh -huh. you put me through an audition and I passed and, and you said I could have a walk on and then you stopped doing that show. Does, is it a deal that carries over? Yes, it does. Does it really? Yes, it does. What kind of part would you like to play? I want to be a delivery boy that comes and knocks on the door. We can make that happen. Wouldn't that be great? You're in. Just a, a UPS, FedEx, whatever, pizza guy. Okay. Pizza? Pinky promise, I mean. Pizza. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Reba. You're welcome anytime. <laughs>
To hear the artist's heartfelt sentiments for all in the storm's path, visit headlinecountry.net. When we come back, BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC honor top songwriters for creating this past year's biggest hits. Well, you know their songs, but you might not know the people behind your favorite hits. And for most of the year, songwriters don't mind living in relative anonymity. But then there's that one week when they crawl out from underneath their creative rocks, get all dressed up, and get to become stars in their own spotlight. We hit the red carpets for the Big Three Songwriting Award ceremonies hosted by music licensing organizations BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the 60th annual BMI Country Music Awards. This is um, my favorite award show. It always has been. I've been here every year since I've been in town. A bunch of my writer buddies are getting awards tonight. My dad's winning awards tonight. Songwriters are the, are the, like, are the crazy brains behind the actual crazy artists. It all starts with a song, and at the 60th annual BMI Awards, nothing could have been more true as writers from the year's 50 most played hits got their chance to take center stage. Our Songwriter of the Year, and this year we have a tie. Sharing the prestigious Songwriter of the Year Award, pals Dallas Davidson and Luke Laird were crowned the night's big winners, contributing five songs each to the most performed list, which for Dallas includes Luke Bryan's Country Girl, Shake It For Me, and I Don't Want This Night To End, Justin Moore's If Heaven Wasn't So Far Away, and Lady A's Just A Kiss. Plus, we own the night. Yeah, we Laird boasted an impressive list of his own with credits to Sarah Evans, a little bit stronger, baggage claimed by Miranda Lambert, drink in my hand with Eric Church, you by Chris Young and Rodney Atkins, take a back road, which also claimed this year's song of the year crown. Makes me want to take a back road. I think my odds were better of getting in a plane in the World Series last week than to get to record a song like that. Water whiskey. Performances of the night included a musical tribute to Tom T. Hall, led by Toby Keith, the Avett Brothers, bluegrass duo Daly and Vincent, and Justin Towns Earl, before the famed craftsman was proclaimed BMI's latest musical icon. We celebrate the living legacy of the storyteller Tom T. Hall. There's always something extremely special that goes on on these nights, and uh, tonight's going to be one of those. People like Tom T. Hall, that's like the dude that paved paved the way for all of us songwriters. I've had a good life and I have great friends and great family. I love you guys. Thank you. This is the first one we've ever been to, so I don't really know what to expect. For me, it's like a class reunion. Really, you know, some of the best songwriters in the world are in this room tonight. Down the street and one day earlier, the theme of recognizing songwriters continued at the 50th annual ASCAP Awards. I'm just now becoming a member of ASCAP, so I thought it'd be cool to play a brand new ASCAP song tonight. So, so I'm, we're going we're gonna to kick it off. That's what I want, that's who I while Kip Moore got the privilege of opening the show, it was Brad Paisley who ended up on top, taking home the songwriter slash artist of the year title for his career second time. I'm honored to be one of you at my heart. That's what I am more than anything as a songwriter and uh, humbled to be here. Thanks again for this. Yeah, caught up in a southern summer barefoot blue jean night. A two-way tie between Jake Owens' Barefoot Blue Jean Night from writers Eric Paslay and Terry Sawchuck and Blake Shelton's Honeybee from Red Aikens and Ben Hayslip walked away with the Country Song of the Year props. I'll be your While the trophy also earned Hayslip his second consecutive win as Songwriter of the Year, which came just days after his latest co-write, Carrie Underwood's Blown Away topped the charts. I'm completely honored to represent every songwriter in Nashville, Tennessee, so I want you to give yourself a big hand. Thank you. Dina Carter, Dirks Bentley, and Darius Rucker were also among the night's winners, as was veteran hitmaker Lyle Lovett, who enjoyed a heartwarming serenade before accepting ASCAP's highly coveted Creative Voice Award. That my friends would show up tonight and uh, uh, you know take take the time to learn my songs and to, and to play them, it really means the world to me. And if I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. CSAC Awards had their fair share of songwriters and stars to be honored as well. Winners and performers included Thompson Square, Lee Bryce, and Lady Antebellum's Hilary Scott, who took home four awards, including one for writing the group's latest single, Wanted You More. I guess I wanted you more. We're just going to be basically celebrating 
the beautiful art of songwriting tonight. One of the night's top honors, Songwriter of the Year, went to Kat Gravit, whose hits include Jake Owen's Alone With You and Jana Kramer's Why You Wanna. Why you gotta, why you wanna, make me keep wanting you. Song of the Year went to John Stone, who was able to give fellow songwriter and friend Lee Bryce a career first. We are here because he wrote a song called A Woman Like You that was actually ended up being my first number one, and he's gonna be honored for that tonight. Still to come, James Taylor, Bob Seger, and George Strait help induct Garth Brooks into the Country Music Hall of Fame. One has spent decades creating and playing some of the most iconic piano licks ever recorded. Another is one of the most talented and imitated female singers in history. And the third, well, we just know him as Garth. Pig Robbins, Connie Smith, and Garth Brooks were officially welcomed into the Country Music Hall of Fame by a cavalcade of stars, including James Taylor, Bob Seger, Crystal Gale, George Strait, Leanne Womack, and even a pair of Ronnies, Millsap and Dunn. Needless to say, it was a night no one in attendance will ever forget. It's all hitting me right now. <laughs> That's a deal. <laughs> a sweet guy that asked me, he says, you know, has it been sinking in? Or I said, yeah, in about the last 10 minutes. It just has. <laughs> Hello, Country Music Hall of Fame member, Pig Robbins. How does that sound? Hey, that sounds good. And I am really proud to be here. <laughs> Which is so funny coming from you. You're like the most humble, sweetest, nicest person in the world. You have to allow yourself to feel okay about this moment. Well, I'm excited. What I love about this trio that's going in the Hall of Fame, they're still all very relevant. Can you just brag about this class of uh, Pig and Garth and Connie for a second? Oh, I mean, they're all incredible. And of course, Pig Robbins is really special to me. <laughs> he created a magical lick for a song that uh, not many singers get a song like Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. that first little piano lick and you know what it is. And, and it added that magical touch. It really did. A white light. I'm just going to do my job. I don't, I, don't, I don't go around analyzing it. It's just something that happens when you hear a song, a lyric, a melody. Connie Smith can sing rings around most all the country singing girls out here uh, that's, that's you know, 18, 20, 25 years old today. And I I love my music, I love my family. I do believe with all of my heart this was God's destiny for me to be a country girl singer. I just love Garth's passion and I'm really honored to be here. I, this is wonderful, the Country Music Hall of Fame, it's really cool. I asked Garth when, when he found out about this, I said, you know, what would your dream be for this night? He started to tell me what he, well, if I could have my dream, this is what I want. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> this whole getting longer. You're talking George, you're talking James, you're talking Bob Seek. To have them in one room singing your music. Don't do it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make He's it. Gonna yeah. be cuddle. And I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry. He changed the face of modern country music. He did. He made it into arena uh, music. I remember hearing about him out on stage swinging on ropes and throwing stuff around and, and uh, saying, uh, this is country music. Can he do that? <laughs> you have to give him all the credit for that because it had never done it, it had never been done before before him. 20 years in the business under my own name. Thank you very much. I still want to be George Strait so damn bad. I, can't. <laughs> I, just, I just love you, Ty. I just do. I love the Bible. I think it's the greatest book on the planet. I'm going to misquote it, but somewhere in there it says, a man can make it to heaven through his wife or through a woman. And I got to say, Miss Sherwood, you are my only shot. <laughs> I love you very, very much. Thank you guys very much. Big congratulations to Garth, Connie, and Pig, three incredibly deserving additions to the Country Music Hall of Fame. As for my personal highlight, Bob Seger's performance of Garth's song that summer sounded like he'd been singing that song for the past 30 years. He absolutely nailed it. You can visit the plaques of all the Hall of Fame inductees in the museum's rotunda right here in downtown Nashville. 
For the record, just because they're in the Hall of Fame, that doesn't mean they're done. All three in this year's class are far from being done with their careers. Well, that's it for this week. Next time, Toby Keith brings us to the set of his new music video for the title track of his new album, Hope on the Rocks. Until then, keep up with us on Twitter, Facebook, and HeadlineCountry.net or GACTV.com. Take care, everybody. I'll be your honeybee. I'll be your honeybee Thank you